misunderstood and took an oath to our people. It is very appropriate that from this cradle of the Confederacy, this very heart of the great Anglo-Saxon Southland, that today we sound the drum for freedom as have our generation of forebears before us done time and again down through history. Let us rise to the call of freedom-loving blood that is in us and send our answer to the tyranny that clanks its chains upon the South in the name of the greatest people that have ever trod this earth. I draw the line in the dust and toss the gauntlet before the feet of tyranny and I say segregation now, segregation tomorrow, and segregation forever. <laughs> Uh, yeah, do you know who that is? His name is George Wallace. You may or not, may not know who he is. He was governor, no, I do not want to see that again. He was governor of Alabama. This is him right here. He was governor of Alabama from 1963 to 1967, from 1971 to 1979, and from 1983 to 1987. He also ran for president four times, but thankfully never won in 1964, 1968, as well as in 1972 and 1976. In 1968, he ran as a third party candidate. He was only able to really appeal to the Deep South, and many of the uh, hardcore racists in the, that area really liked him because of his staunch support for racial segregation. and. Wallace uh, was, and more, and uh, also about his staunch support for racial segregation. That is what he is mainly known for today. This is a picture of him literally standing at the door of the University of Alabama to prevent African American students from entering. And in 1968, let's just say he won the election. This is an extremely unlikely scenario. This could have only been done if the Electoral College was deadlocked. And for that to happen, Wallace would would have to have, would have to have split the conservative vote from Nixon enough so that Humphrey could win Ohio uh, and Missouri, as well as not to mention the fact that Wallace had to win the, somehow win in the House of Representatives. And let's just say this guy James Eastland was his running mate. And Eastland, he was a staunch uh, segregationist and was probably one of the most racist uh, senators in the entire history of the Senate. And he would, would have been uh, a good running mate for Wallace because mostly because he didn't he would not have made as many gaffes as uh, Curtis LeMay, who was Wallace's actual running mate, did. Not to mention he would be able to appe appe appeal more to the uh, race uh, the more hardcore racists in the southern area, which Wallace already did appeal to. But let's just say his running mate was this guy rather than LeMay. And these, and if even if uh, Wallace did make it to the House, Nixon and Humphrey would not have allowed Wallace to win. They most likely would have struck a deal to make sure he would not win. But let's just say somehow he did. This is alternate history. While there would most likely be riots everywhere, because really nobody except for the uh, people from the Deep South and some blue collar workers who were uh, who were liberal uh, economically but were very displeased with the social riots would have uh, no, and everyone except for them would not have wanted Wallace to be president, particularly the African American community and the civil rights movement and. Wallace would have, uh, no doubt, he would have opposed civil rights bills passed by Congress that Nixon had signed, and he would have tried probably to uh, repeal the Civil Rights Act of 1964, though he most likely would be unsuccessful in this given the fact that literally 73 out of 100 senators voted for the Civil Rights of 1964, so I doubt that really it could get overruled. I mean, not overruled, I really doubt that Wallace could successfully repeal it. And even though there would be future civil rights bills passed by Congress, which Wallace would no doubt veto, Congress could easily override those vetoes. Though when it came, though Wallace would probably not have enforced those civil rights bills, given the fact that Congress could not enforce its own bills, it needed the president to do that. And if the president did not enforce the bills, well, it was pretty much useless. And that would no doubt cause conflict between Wallace and Congress. And when it came to economic issues, Wallace was pretty much the same as JFK. He would have wanted to cut taxes, not to mention he also would have wanted to um, 
increase spending on some stuff like roads, education, and most likely the EPA would still have been established, though maybe not as powerful, because Wallace, he still wasn't like a, he wasn't like a complete liberal on economic issues like in the mold of uh, Hubert Humphrey or Lyndon Johnson or even George McGovern, but he most likely, he most likely would have been in the center when it came to economic issues, not wanting to spend too much, but at the same time in favor of federal, um, intervention in, ec in the economy, and he most likely around the 1970s would change parties and come back to the Democrats, and by this time we would still probably enter into a recession with the oil crisis of 1973, which would happen in the very end of Wallace's term, not to mention the fact that the, um, the recession would have still happened, and mostly maybe even uh, earlier due to Wallace's uh, spending initiatives, though maybe actually not so much because Wallace would not have spent so much money on foreign policy as Nixon did. So maybe the we would not have had as much as a recession as we truly did, not to mention the fact that the civil rights movement would only grow more and more, and Wallace, I think, would overall just finally cave in. And, but he, he would have been still opposed to something known as busing, which was when they would uh, bus, basically they would just uh, mix together uh, African Americans and white Americans and they would, uh, I don't really know how to explain it, but it was really like something that many conservatives had opposed and Waltz would pretty much be successful in ending uh, federal attempts to busing. Even Nixon and Reagan were opposed to busing, by the way, same as Jimmy Carter also. And... Because of uh, George Wallace, most likely the Democrats, who would hate him, by the way, would most likely choose someone on the far uh, end of the left spectrum, probably George McGovern. And would the, would the Republicans nominate Nixon? Most likely not, because Nixon would probably choose not to run. Not to mention the fact that they would, not, they would probably choose someone to the right of Nixon, most notably either Ronald Reagan, and probably Ronald Reagan, or someone in the mold of Ronald Reagan. And Reagan would most likely choose Gerald Ford or someone in the mold of Ford as his running mate. Pretty much a balance of the conservative and moderate wings of the party. And this would be the electoral map. As you can see, Reagan absolutely demolishes McGovern. Not really much of a contest. Though McGovern does do considerably better than he did against uh, Nixon due to the fact that still many people want a liberal in charge of the government. And Nick and Wallace, who's the incumbent, is in no way near as, po uh, as popular as Nixon was at that time. Not to mention the fact, but still Reagan would still win by a sizable margin. Due to, the, due to his uh, staunch anti-communism and the fact that Democrats, who were pretty much running the government for all this time, would not have been too popular. And under this Reagan administration that would have uh, happened earlier, we would pretty much see the same thing with regards to tax cuts as well as uh, a supply, basically supply-side economics, not to mention the uh, federal... Uh, more uh, a more hardline approach to communism. And speaking of communism, what would have George Wallace done with regards to communism? Well, Wallace was uh, was pretty much also pretty uh, a staunch anti-communist, though he would not have been as willing to put military troops actually out there as Reagan and Nixon were. He most likely would have uh, withdrawn forces from the southeast way earlier than Nixon did, mostly because Wallace actually had a plan to withdraw forces after 90 days if the war was not winnable, and it was not winnable. So Wallace would most likely just take forces out of Vietnam, and we would still see South Vietnam falling to communism, and that most likely would cause Wallace's approval to further plummet, not to mention Wallace may still have been engaged in some of the proxy wars around the Middle East and Africa, though he would mostly do a more hands-off approach. So, also, we would still see the same future presidents as we did under uh, our actual real timeline. And as for the political future of George Wallace, after the 1972 election, uh, he most likely would try to run for governor of Alabama again. He would probably win because he would have been popular in his home state even though he would have been unpopular in pretty much every other state so really Wallace would have um so really what would have really changed under George Wallace and to do so we first must understand Wallace himself Wallace was really just someone who would do what the majority of people wanted because he wanted to get elected I myself this may be a controversial stance but I myself do not know whether Wallace was truly racist or not because when he first ran for governor in 1958, an interesting thing was that 
He actually adopted a more moderate stance on race, and he actually denounced the Ku Klux Klan. But then four years ago, because he lost, he adopted this hardline stance. And actually in 1983, when he could see that the tides were turning, he then, like, he became a more... He, he actually went out and apologized to African Americans for his previous stances. So I think ultimately Wallace was just someone who would do whatever it took to get elected. Your standard politician these days. So... And Wallace would most likely just do initiatives such as just really tax cutting and spending increases would be no different from Nixon really and in terms of the economy and would really also be a more, um, he also would have supported some, uh, some civil rights stuff very late into his term like around the late 1970s and even his earlier on opposition would have most likely been overridden by Congress, and really not much would change at all with the George Wallace presidency, mostly if you look at the composition of Congress. So that's really all I have. Thank you for watching. Make sure you like this video and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed. And yeah, I'll be making more alternate history videos in the future. And be sure to check out my next video, which is about what if Andrew Jackson was never president. I know he's another controversial figure. So anyway, make sure you like this video and subscribe. So, and thanks for watching, by the way.